Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I thought I'd show you this fun little Stampendous Snowman card. And we're going to be using some glimmer paste and doing some stenciling as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start off by using the Hero Arts Infinity Nesting Rectangle dies. And we're going to use that second largest one. We're going to be die cutting this out of the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. And I'm running that through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. Now for the stamps, we're going to be using this Stampendous Kling Rubber Stamps. And we're going to be using that sentiment there, the little cardinal, and the snowman with the deer. And this comes from the Kling Giving Snowmen set. And it also comes with this beautiful snowflake stencil as well. And you can see that right there. So I'm going to go ahead and place the stencil over my cardstock and I'm going to take a little bit of purple tape just to tape that in place. So now I'm going to take my Nouveau Glimmer Paste in the Moonstone color, which is a glittery clear paste. To spread the paste, I'm going to be using the Nouveau Media Spatula. I'm going to use this smaller one here. And I'm also using my Distress Oxide ink in the Milled Lavender. And I'm going to go ahead and using my foam applicator tool, I'm just going to apply a, a base of that color all on all of these stencils here. So what I'm going to do after I get all of these stenciled in, and while that ink is still wet, I'm going to apply the glimmer paste right over the top of this. And what that's going to do is lift that ink color up into the paste. So if you only have one color of the paste, this clear one, you can change the color a little bit just by using the stencil and then applying your paste and it will lift a little bit of that color up into the paste. So you'll see later on that it will give it kind of a lavender look. And I do have to say, I love this spatula. It's really flexible on the end, but not too much so. And it really allowed me to spread this paste nice and evenly. Now, once you do that, you want to just clean off those edges a little bit. Just take your finger and rub it right along those edges and just clean off any excess paste. And make sure you clean your tools really well after you use them. Now what I'm going to do here is set this aside and let this dry. And then I'll come back later and do the rest of it. So now I'm going to use my nesting circle dies from We Are Memory Keepers and I'm using the 8th and 9th largest dies. And the Hero Hues Premium 100 pound cardstock in the Paradise color. And also a piece of Bristol Smooth. So I'm running those two circles through. The larger one will be out of the Paradise color and the smaller one will be out of the Bristol Smooth. And those will line up one on top of the other. And now I'm going to grab my stamp here. And I just think this is so adorable. I'm using my Misty Stamp Positioner and I'm removing that foam mat because we are using this thick rubber foam stamp. So I'm going to line this up on my Misty. And then I'm going to just pick pick up the stamp and I'm going to be stamping using my Versafine Onyx Black Ink. And this is a permanent black ink. So once we have that stamped, we're going to start coloring using our distressed markers. And we're using Wilted Violet and Picked Raspberry. And there is a detailer tip on one end and a brush tip on the other end. And these are a water-based marker. So I'm going to be doing my blending using my Tim Holtz detailer tip water brush. And you can see there that I've applied the ink and then I just keep dabbing it off on a towel. This is just a paper towel and as I get blend the colors, I'm just removing that excess ink. So you can continue to do that. And then I continue to color in that scarf the same way. Just kind of keeping it lighter off to the right side here. And I'm going to do the same exact thing with the uh, wilted violet.
Now I'm going back here and just adding a little bit more of a darker shade there towards the left side and pulling it over. So I finished up the scarf. Now I'm just adding a little bit of that picked raspberry to those two berries on his hat. And using Vintage Photo, I'm going to go ahead and do the, the little arms, the branches. And I'm going to take Antique Linden and Vintage Photo again, and I'm going to go ahead and color in this little deer. And I'm also going to use the sponge sugar on the cheeks of the deer and on the little snowman. And I'm just quickly blending that out. So I'm going to apply this lighter color all over. Just kind of not being fussy here, just randomly adding that. And then I'm going to grab the vintage photo and start to kind of add a little bit of shading to this. So I'm just adding the color where I think it would be the darkest. And then I'm going back to my water brush and I'm just going to blend that out. And I just think th these little images are so cute. And if you want to check out another Stampendous image that I did a few weeks ago, it was called the Stampendous Curio Santa Scarf Card. And I also use the distress markers in that one as well. Now here I'm using the black soot on his hat and I do want to keep the center of his hat the lightest. So I'm going to keep, continue to dab off some color here just to keep it nice and light in the center there. Now with peeled paint and forest moss, I'm going to go ahead and just do those two little leaves on the hat here. And I'm going back to the picked raspberry to do the little ribbon on the hat. Now with carved pumpkin, I'm going to do his carrot nose. And with weathered wood, I'm going to do all the shadowing on the snow and the snowman. So here I'm just adding a little bit of color and then I'm pulling that color in. And I'm kind of following the lines of the stamp as to where to add that shading. And if you get too much ink, again, just keep pulling it off and dabbing it off on your scrap paper. And the weathered wood is nice because it has, it's kind of a blue-gray color, so it's really good for doing snow. And then I'm going to add a little bit up towards underneath his hat there and pull that down just a little bit. Now I'm going back to the black soot and doing the little buttons on him. And then I'm going back to the weathered wood here to do the snow on the bottom. I'm adding a little bit of shadow behind his feet there. So you just want to scribble it from his feet backwards a little bit and then pull that color out. And that'll create a little bit of a shadow. And then to add some little snow drifts, I just do a little squiggly line of color and then I grab it from the top and pull it down and just blend it out. And that'll just give you a little bit of a look of the snow. So there you can see it up close. And now I'm going to do the sky, and I'm going to use the peacock feathers here. So I'm adding a little bit of that color, and then I'm just going to start pulling it up, kind of keeping it the darkest towards the bottom there. And if your brush gets a little too dry, just squeeze it, and that will release a little bit of more water into the pen. But you do want to check it after you squeeze it, because sometimes it gets really wet. But to do the sky, I did want the brush to be a little bit wetter, just to make it easier to move this around. And again, all I'm doing is just kind of pulling that out. And I don't want it to be perfect. I'm just kind of going for a random look here in the sky. And I'm going to continue to do that all the way around. Now, if you get 
I got some color there that I didn't want. I got a little bit of pink in the sky area. So what you want to do is just apply a little bit of water to the paper and then blot it up with a paper towel and that will just remove any color, excess color. And you can do that as many times as you need to until all the color is removed. I'm just kind of going into the dark the areas where right around him that would be a little darker and then pulling it out towards the edges and again not being fussy here because we are going to be adding some more color to this with some ink pads in a minute so this is just kind of the first layer here again I'm just blotting up any excess color that I got there And I wanted to get a little bit more of that darker color in between the branches because I'm going to be adding a little bit of snow later on and I want it to stand out a little bit more. So now I'm going to heat set that quickly. And now I'm going to my milled lavender and my peacock feathers distress oxide ink pads. And I'm going to apply that milled lavender first. And I want to go right up to that sky that we've created and kind of overlapping it a little bit there. This is gonna give us this beautiful sky. And now for the peacock feathers, I'm gonna go around the edges first, just to highlight that edge. And I'm going all the way around here. And then I'm just gonna go in very slightly into the uh, circle a little bit here. Not much at all, just very slightly. And I did not re-ink. I just used the ink that was already on the applicator. And now you can see that sky up close. So that's going to sit right on our uh, darker colored paper here. And I'm going to use my Gina K Connect Glue to attach these two together. And that'll just give me a little time to move this around here and make sure it's centered really well. Now using my Jelly Roll white gel pen, I'm going to add a little white to the tail. And then I'm going to add that snow, as I mentioned before, in, in the little crevices here on the branch. And you'll be able to see that better here in a second. And I just think this adds a lot of dimension to the card. Can you see that there a little bit closer? Now for the cardinal, all I'm going to do is attach this to my glass mixed media mat. It's going to stick right in place there. I'm just going to ink up that little cardinal. And I'm grabbing a little piece of scrap from my Bristol Smooth cardstock and just pressing that out. And I've got that image stamped. To color this in, I'm using spun sugar and festive berries. I'm using a little bit of the pink on the tummy. And then I'm grabbing the festive berries and pulling that down a little bit. And I do want to keep cleaning that off because I wanted to keep this fairly light. Just adding a little bit more shading there. And we're going to be cutting this out so you can go over the lines. And I did use my scissors to trim that down. Now for the sentiment, I'm going to take this sentiment here and I'm going to ink that up with the VersaFine Onyx Black ink pad. And that says, May you enjoy a season of giving, which I just think is so cute. And now I'm going to use my Tim Holtz paper trimmer and I'm going to trim this down to create a little bit of a banner. So this is about two and a half inches uh, wide here. And then I just trimmed it right up to the words. And now I'm going to create a little bit of a bow tie look here. So I'm just cutting down the center about maybe a half an inch. And then I'm going in from each side to that center point. And that's going to create this little angle here. So now I want to add a little bit of ink around the edges of this and I'm just taking my foam applicator tool again not adding any ink to it just kind of brushing it right around the edges just to take away a little bit of that white color. 
you can see that there. So I'm adding a little bit of glue to the end of the word giving. And my little cardinal is going to sit right on that letter there. It just looked like a little perch to me, so I decided to put the little cardinal there. So now I can go back. My uh, stenciling is dry, so I can go back and finish this up really quickly here. I'm just going to mask off any of those snowflakes that I don't want to get any of the ink or glimmer paste on. So I'm just using a little bit of purple tape to mask those off. And I'm going to do the exact same thing we did before, starting with adding my milled lavender ink and then going back to my glimmer paste. And then just brush away that those edges again with your finger. And now I'm going to carefully uh, do this last one without touching those ones there that are wet. So I just kind of am sticking the stencil kind of over to the left side here just to make sure I don't touch anything. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. And now we have that all stenciled and I'm going to let that dry. So using the Hero Hues cardstock in the Arctic, which again is a 100 pound weight, I'm going to create my card, which will measure four and a quarter by five and a half. And it would normally be a top folding card, but I'm going to turn it on its side. And I'm going to use my Scotch ATG 700 tape dispenser to apply tape to the back of this. And then I'm going to center it on my card. And now for the little snowman, I'm going to pop it up using the Gina K foam squares. And I'm going to put plenty of these all around the back just to make sure it sits up nice. And then I'm going to put this towards the left side of my card, kind of centering it the top, bottom, and left side. And now for my sentiment, I just need to pop up the right side of it. And then I'm going to put glue on the left side here because I want it to sit flush with the uh, circle. Now I'm going back to my Jelly Roll white gel pen and I'm just going to add a little bit, kind of just some little dots of white on the deer and a little bit more highlighting on my snowman here. Now I'm using the Nouveau Drops in the Pale Periwinkle and these are the Jewel Drops and they're just absolutely beautiful. It's kind of a translucent lavender color. And I'm filling in, in between the snowflakes here, just where those blank white spaces are. And this pale periwinkle matched the milled lavender color really well. So now that everything's dry, I wanted to give you a closer look at this card. You can see all the layers we have here. And I just love that lavender peacock blue combination. And I want to show you a second card I created using the same image. I did the same stencil. I just did not use the glimmer paste. And then I did used a couple of dies from Lawn Fawn. So for the stenciling, I used the Broken China Distress Oxide. And I used the outside in stitched scallop circles and the outside in stitched rectangle stackable dies from Lawn Fawn. And I also did a little spattering in the background with the Broken China ink as well. And so there's the two completed cards. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. And as always, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.